Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a bit of a chat on the value of limited palettes, uh, and I thought we'd uh, demonstrate that um, with this Yindrustra model. So, you know, over the last uh, few months, I've been putting up a lot of uh, tutorials around Stormcast, but also a lot of my other tutorials, and um, you'll notice a theme there. There's a lot of similar colors, similar techniques, and so on. And, you know, part of the reason for that is the fact that they're the colors I have available to me and for my armies and so on. But then the other part of it is um, to try to limit my palette consciously so that you know, I can get more out of the colors that I have, but we'll go into that in a second. So um, I thought for Yindrustra here, I'll take you through the process of painting her in a nice little sped up bit of footage as we discuss uh, some of these, some of these ideas and some of these, um, I guess, yeah, pros and cons to limited palettes and, and what they can do for you. Um, if you are interested in this color scheme, I'll put a link to the uh, painting of Vindicta uh, tutorial uh, here in the top corner um, if you want to check out the full process of painting this style of Stormcast and I'll put all the links for all the individual um, hobby tip videos on those techniques as well and, and the Vindicta one in the in the, um, the description below if you want to go back and take a look at all those different things for the color glazing and in the armor and so on and the, the bl highlighting the black and the bone and um, you know, painting the flesh and all that kind of thing. So, but you'll see me go through and paint this. So, just to give you an idea, um, this has been undercoated black, and then uh, with the Citadel uh, Chaos Black, and then I've masked off the areas that I didn't want to hit with the brass, and then I've sprayed with the Rune Lord Brass Citadel spray, um, just to make it easier to clean it up. And then I've gone back with the black and just touched up all the areas. Um, on the model so it's ready just makes it easier to mask off you know rather than hitting it all with the rune lord brass because then it, it makes it this um, um, undercoat spray it's a little smooth so when you try to paint over it it takes a few coats to get it down so just to make it easier because there is such a lot of black here like on the wings and so on um, yeah, it just makes it easier overall to paint it. But, you know, we're going to go through and do my classic stuff, my color glazing with the magentas, purples, and blues. Um, and, yeah, for Yindrustra here, she's going to be getting um, black wings. I don't really want the, the angel wings. I want, I want something, you know, raven wings or something dark, especially for this color scheme. And I'm thinking we're going to be probably fading in some... Um, blue greens in, into the into the ends of the feathers to give a bit of color in there and make it make it a you know give it a bit of a, a focus for those wings but um, yeah it should be a lot of fun but anyway um, let's get into it so I guess we should begin um, with a little bit of a journey so when I first started getting back into the hobby a few years ago you know dusted off the old paints and, and getting all the old stuff that I had you know stored away and and getting it all back out again and you know going through all the colors and everything like that and one of the one of the things you know i noticed and then obviously going to the hobby stores is that you know paints have gone up in price and you know all that kind of thing and you, you're going to end up spending a lot and and i was looking at the colors i had and i was like well you know um what can i do with these and and of course you're always going to buy new colors and you know that's part of the fun and, and testing out new colors but i was really looking at um, one, I wanted to try a few different brands. Obviously, I'd, I'd done Citadel Games Workshop colors for years, and I had never tried really any other brands. You know, back in the early days, um, I worked for the company back in the late 90s, early 2000s here in Australia, and uh, for Games Workshop, that is. And so, um, which I've mentioned on other other blogs and so on, uh, vods, I mean. And, um, you know, uh, I was obviously very much in the Games Workshop world, so I, I mostly only use Citadel. We use a few other colors, but mostly just Citadel paints and everything and, and all of that, because when you're working in the stores, that's what you have available, so that's what you use. Um, and, you know, that was all really great. And, and coming into it again, you know, I'm, I'm now on the, the I guess, the hobbyist customer side of the, the deal. And, you know, those kinds of, I guess, restraints aren't on me. So I can, you know, explore like the, like everyone gets to do, which I, I found is a really wonderful thing. Like um, I've talked about this before, like this is the first time, I guess, in my adult life that I've actually been a customer uh, and not part of the company. So and it, it's a very different experience. It's a wonderful experience because you get to have those kinds of choices and, you know, and, and decide for yourself what you really love, you know, choose different brands, all that kind of stuff and, and really explore. And um, you can certainly do that when you're working for Games Workshop, but obviously 
there is a sort of an official face that you're putting forward when you're when you're in the stores um, and you know obviously trying to promote the product so you know there is a certain a certain small amount of restraint there that you have to you know um, present I guess so you know looking through those paints and deciding on what I was going to do and um, you know I, I really love blues and greens and this kind of color so I started out just thinking about that stuff just what are the things that I really love what are the colors that I really love and then looking at what I had and what I needed to get to to build a palette that I could use to paint paint the army with and it started out as a more organic process but what I found as I've been going through first Death Guard models and then um, on to other armies and and now with um, as you're seeing Yandrustra getting painted uh, with the, the Stormcast I've really grown over that and that's coinciding with this channel as well um, doing tutorials that are based on this idea and you know finding out ways to incorporate uh, different color schemes but using the same like I guess palette of colors or same set of colors and seeing what kind of varieties that you can get out of it and there's a lot that you can do with that um, and, and, and I find that it does lend itself to I guess um, pushing your creativity there's a there's an old uh, trick that you know um, art teachers and teaching general general will use um, if you've ever been to an art school or anything like that uh, one of the one of the things that they'll do is they'll they'll give all the students a set of um, this often happens in sculpture so they'll, they'll give let's say um, you know they might have like nine objects you know a twig a, you know a bit of metal or something and whatever else you know maybe a bit of cardboard and um, a whole range of like disparate objects and they'll give the class maybe a, a theme or a and say or maybe no theme at all and just say here are these nine objects I want you to go away and, and um, you're all going to make something from that so sometimes it's open-ended and um, whether there's a theme or not, or whether there's restrictions, further restrictions than just the materials, um, you'll find that every single student will have a completely different object at the end. You know, it'll be all unique. You know, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how restrictive those pieces are, you know, human beings are uh, a creative industrious and they'll figure out a way to make it work. And so you end up having this wide variety of, of, um, of uh, artistic pieces, all from the same uh, group of objects. And you know that's that's the wonderful thing, and and that's where that's where the magic happens. And so often, you know, um, this type of limiting can can really help. And that that's what I've found myself personally is that it's allowed me to like think outside the box a bit and try to figure out ways to incorporate different color schemes. And so you'll see that uh, whether it's the the Black King models I was painting or or my own 3D printed stuff that I've got on the channel there or um, any of them that I've got in the hobby vlogs or you're seeing the Death Guard and so on, they're all kind of using similar techniques. And here on the on the Stormcast, we're seeing that put into action. So I've got those blue greens in there. I've got um, all the color glazing, you know, um, you know, and this is also coupled with like art fundamentals. So as your skill increases, your ability to um, access this type of, you know, limited palette or limited set of choices and your ability to be more creative with it um, sort of increases the more you go, right? And you'll get more out of it. Not to say that when you're first starting, you can't get um, a lot of creativity. You certainly can. In fact, you know, the... I guess the the new or naivety of that of that that moment is actually quite helpful in finding new ways to do things. Um, you know, you can stumble across things that maybe a more practiced person wouldn't. And so these are some of the initial, I guess, pros of of using a limited palette and and, and what it can do for you. And and if you are thinking about that, um, you know, that's that's a good place to start. Is thinking about the colors you like or the you know. And this doesn't just necessarily mean about about painting. This could also be about conversion or about you know uh, model and sculpting as well you can also use that idea for those things too and only use a limited number of things or a limited idea or something like that and try to get more out of it and um, you know but yeah certainly starting with you know what are the colors I like you know and then see see where that takes you you know have a look at the color wheel and see which ones are complementary that that means the ones that are on the opposing side of the wheel so if you like blue greens what's on the other side if you like purple what's on the other side of that or red or whatever and then have a think about what those colors could be for you and, and how many of them you could use and and that might that might give you a good starting point um, and if you and also have a look at uh, the different miniature companies that put their their painting forward like you know like heavy metal for games workshop or you know uh, the paint jobs that you see with creature caster or, or um, um, or other other miniature companies that put forward high quality paint jobs uh, for their products, you can see how they choose to paint them. What do they do? Like what what are their color schemes? You know, and and, and Games Workshop's one of those ones that does do a lot of that 
kind of more limited palette stuff. I mean, Space Marines are a perfect example of that. You're having one main color and then a few secondaries and a pop color usually. Um, you know, they're, they're designed that way and there's a reason. You know, it's also about efficiency. So then the second, I guess, pro to this is the speed that you're getting from, you know, um, having a limited number of paints, a limited number of steps, it's going to obviously speed you up. You're going to get more more, uh, more done, basically. So that's also good for speed painting as well, not just slower, uh, more methodical painting. Um, and you're seeing a sort of hybrid mix here on the industry. You're seeing me utilize some speed techniques as well as some slower stuff. It's something that I talk about a lot is, you know, um, I like efficient painting, but I also like to have moments on the model where I can slow down and, and dig into my skill base and, and, and be able to usually on the focal points so you know painting the faces or something that's predominant on the model that I want to uh, show attention to I'll do a slower technique on that and then have an, a, another area on the model that's a faster one so that you're not always going at a snail's pace you can have some areas that make it feel like you're moving forward and progressing right you really need that with painting you need to have that that slow and fast you know modulation across across the whole the whole process um, it's much harder to remain focused and motivated if everything is a slow process or even reversely if everything is a fast process you're never really getting a chance to get into that zone you know that 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 meditative moment of of, of enjoyment with with these with this this hobby you know, artists will talk about that and, and other even sporting people, anyone that, that does uh, some sort of pursuit, there's a moment of sort of serenity that comes over you when you really hit the, that stride, you know, or like a surfer when they when they hit the, the, the perfect wave, you know, that's a euphoric moment and time just slips away. And you're, if you're always speeding through things, you're never really hitting that that moment. You need to actually be in, in the zone for quite a while to actually feel that 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 moment of calm and 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 just uh you know one with the one with the miniature you know what i mean it's a bit of a, i guess maybe it's a too too high level thinking for just little toy soldiers but you know it's a creative pursuit and even if you don't see yourself as an artist or a creative person you are doing a creative thing and thereby you are actually you know an artist of sorts even if you don't necessarily you know um identify with that term um, that's actually what you're doing and you know that that's that's part of it and so you know when you're finding that limited palette this has a lot of benefits you know in those early days it also helps you to not overwhelm yourself with too many techniques too many um, uh, processes so as you're seeing here on Yinjastra I'm using you know uh, only a limited number of really techniques but I'm just you know pushing that as far as I can go while still remaining relatively limited in the in, in the color palette that I'm using you know one of the one of the tricks that I've got here that you're seeing is that I'm not choosing to use white wings and white wings on on a you know on a figure that's also quite bright you know with that with that armor you know you're going to be lost a little bit in in that whereas you have this nice black canvas behind you that that brighter uh, metallic is going to pop forward and she's going to be uh, even now with the you know um, with the with the undercoat it's 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 already popping right but as you as you finish all of that all the wings off and everything comes together you know she's going to stand apart and it and that's going to overall make the, make the contrast higher so when, when you talk about when miniature painters and people talk about things popping that's what you know the kind of thing you're looking for contrast <clears throat> And so that's one way you can do it and and it's using very simple simple methods and that's part of that process and so yeah I definitely urge you to to have a go at, at limiting your palette a bit and so then the third kind of pro I guess <coughs> is um you know money obviously so from a from a, a financial point of view it's very economical you're not um, spending huge numbers of cash on on all these different paints and everything you know once you've found uh, a set of colors that you like maybe between a couple of ranges like maybe Vallejo <clears throat> maybe a couple of game color or something like that or maybe it's army painter you like um, you know try corpse pale it's a great color if you haven't seen my little hobby tips video on why I like corpse pale you should go and have a look at that uh, I think it's a great color for doing flesh um, but anyway um, or you know a bunch of citadel colors you know some contrast paints and so on just a small selection and see what you can get out of it you know that's 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 part of the fun of this hobby is exp experimenting and exploring that and it's and it's going to be definitely cost effective for you you're not going to have to have an entire rack you know I know when you're watching YouTube videos you're seeing these guys with, with huge racks of paints everywhere and it's like it like a you know it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of paint and, and 
That can be true of also brushes as well and things like that. This limited idea can be, you know, extrapolated out to any any aspect of the hobby that you're you're dealing with. You can really find much more creativity by being more limited to, to your approach, um, but still remaining open in the exploratory nature of your of your of your actions, right? So you're not limiting your scope in terms of creativity, you're just limiting your scope in terms of physical um, tools that you're using, right? So like, um, we, we naturally do it anyway. So if you really think about the colors that you use, even without even, you know, consciously doing this, you're already limiting uh, your palette anyway. If you have a look at all the, all the armies that you paint, you have analyzed them, you'll notice there's a theme of color and so on. Uh, same with the brushes. I, I, I can guarantee almost every painter out there, you might have a huge number of brushes sitting in, in your little brush uh, holder, but you probably only use one or two of them, right? At, at any given time. Same with sculpting if you you know if you do a bit of green stuff and you probably have one sculpting tool that you mainly use um, or if it's digital a set of maybe two or three different um, digital brushes that you use to do all the sculpting with but I guess it's the the point of where you become conscious of that and you start um, actually you know purposefully doing it now you have intention behind those actions and that often can help to it, enable greater results because now you're aware you know and that's really what that's about so when we talk about limited palette or things like that we're talking about being aware of your choice and then making making an aesthetic, aesthetic decision about how that's going to look and what you're going to do um, and then you'll you'll uncover new things you know this is uh, again uh, i don't want to express enough the fact that this is a journey and an exploratory one you know this that's where the the the, the fun is you know, if you've ever been into an artist studio or you go to some, like a famous artist, you know, if they have like a walkthrough or something like that and you they'll have uh, recreations of famous artists, their, their workspace, you know, yes, they can be chaotic messes and so on, but there's a there's often a, a very um, interesting thing going on. You can feel that there was, it's almost like a, like a, like a mad scientist lab. You can, you can feel the sense of, 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 of an explorer looking into to ideas and things is always always these interesting little knickknacks and things lying around um, even, even in clean spaces you'll you'll still see the evidence of this kind of you know um, exploration and that's that's a that's a, a really beautiful thing it's a great thing it's part of the reason why this hobby is so great and so yeah I feel like those those kinds of uh, little tests like trying out these kinds of things is, is uh, definitely something worthwhile so, you know, they're, they're, I guess, my main three or four, you know, sort of uh, ideas on, on why these things uh, are good to try, you know, this limited palette idea. And I suppose in terms of cons, um, what would be the con for it? There really isn't a con per se, unless you allow that limiting palette idea to limit your, your creative choice. So, you know, uh, staying doggedly to one idea and never, never altering. That's, that's a different kind of limitation that, that has some negative impacts, you know, on your growth as a, as a person, as a hobbyist, as all, all different things in life that can be said about so many things. But, um, yeah, I guess that's where the con comes in. If you allow that sort of uh, limitation to sort of really block you from 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 moving forward that's that's when that's when it becomes a problem that's maybe when you should you know just throw in a few more colors and you know if it's not working you you keep trying it and it keeps <clears throat> just not really working out and you know maybe it's just that you're using the wrong brush or maybe uh, you know there's a there's a little technical process thing that you're just not quite getting right or maybe it's it is it can be just the wrong the wrong paint you know sometimes or the wrong color combination <clears throat> And not, and not going back and reassessing that and having a little think about why that's happening, um, you know, and changing it up. Um, yeah, that could be one of those, I guess, cons to, to a limited palette idea or a limited number of things idea. You know, you always want to use the best tool available at, at your disposal that you have access to. And so if that means you've got to break those rules, then you should break those rules. Rules are always meant to be uh, bent and, you know, and shaped. They're not necessarily always meant to be, you know, followed to the letter. Some are, some aren't. And in the hobby, you know, most of the rules are <coughs> and, and creativity generally are mostly there to, you know, be, be shaped and warped uh, to your own your own set of desires and, and, and interests and, and utilize them correctly as long as they're not you know harmful ones or things that are going to hurt you or hurt others or whatever that's a whole different story you know like you know tools and so on that, are, that need to be handled with care but if it's just simple things like choosing paint and, and, and color schemes on your models that's really free reign to, to go to go all in on whatever you want to do um, and limited palette idea is just one concept that you can try um, and if you haven't seen 
then the other hobby tips video I did on um, on the color theory thing with um, color and light, like James Gurney's uh, book. You should be able to look at that if you don't know about James Gurney or that book. Um, it's it's got a lot of good information in there. Basically, things where you can do like restricted color palettes by putting um, geometric shapes on top of a color wheel, and you'll find you know a group of colors you can use. That's a really great way to stimulate your 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 mind on breaking out of your, your normal routine of, of choosing colors. So yeah, there's my, uh, I guess my, my few tips on, on, on how to maybe, you know, improve your painting, uh, get, get more fun and enjoyment out of it. If you're, if you're in a rut or you want to try something different. Um, and as you can see here with my Indrastra, you know, utilizing that, that concept can help you also, you know, get a lot of models painted, you know, uh, color schemes like this are, are, are very, very um, easy to do once you understand the process and, you know, it can become a great way to paint an entire army or even just one model, you know, that's, that's, part, that's part of the, 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 the flexibility of something like this. And there we are, one Yindrostra painted in a limited palette. So you can see the sort of benefits of this and you know what you can get out of it. Um, I really enjoy doing this, this color scheme um, and you know, it, it, it just, it's just uh, that efficiency and so on. It, it just, it's just a real pleasure to, to do a color scheme that, you know, where you can actually get something done. Uh, that's part of the, the benefits I, I think of doing these kinds of limited palette things. But you know, you can get a lot out of a few colors as you can see. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave you at the end uh, an image of her with uh, some of the other ones that I've done. So you can see how it looks as an army if you're interest, interested in this particular color scheme uh, and an overview with the paints and the paint list and um, a close up of her just so you can see how it looks under better lighting conditions. Uh, this light tends to blow it all out. But you can see I've also finished off the base. I just added a little bit of uh, sepia wash and um, and some of the the green wash as well, just loosely like watered down, just to just to age the the stone and uh, put a little bit into the um, the gravel and so on on the ground, just to tie it all together, so it's not so. Um, yeah, not so clean. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please hit that like button, subscribe button if you have. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.